Okay. It's 1.32 in the morning. And then the dogs are barking. And they have not allowed me to sleep. So y'all saw at the deep beginning of the video, they um were bright in their lights. And they just did it again. <clears throat> Harassing me. Brighten their lights into my window. It seems like as if I'm huffing and puffing to a brick wall trying to get the truth out and <clears throat> people want to deliberately have their head in the sand and deny reality. Oh, he just came here that son. What? What the hell? What is this dog? Sorry. Damn. You come on, really? And then he, that guy he had on a lime green shirt and he just walked out here same time as I did too. Like it's 1 30 in the morning. And he was just came here and brightened his lights up in here like I almost was about to have a heart attack because I he sit there like he just sit there and let those dogs be loose. They got I mean so I guess he must have just arrived here and was brightening his lights into my window off and on and I'm shaking right now. <clears throat> I was afraid those both of those dogs were gonna jump were gonna jump on and attack me. My whole entire body is shaking, my legs, everything. I almost thought I was gonna have a heart attack. But um tonight is a night where okay, so it's now Sunday, April twenty fourth, two thousand twenty two at one thirty four AM and probably since it's the middle of the night here where we at, you know, I guess any other legit TIs that might be in like UK or Australia or somewhere, they probably might see this in the middle of the night. But other than that, here in America, only the narcissistic perps are up this time of the night pretending to fake monitor and surveil my dog on videos. So now, I definitely can't sleep. And, um, I started to doze off at just before 1030, a few hours ago, like three hours ago. I started to doze off and go to sleep. The perps weren't having that. I mean, my heart was heavy, my brain, everything was prepared for me to just go to sleep. And the perps, the perps weren't having that. In the middle of the night, I don't know what time it was, between 11 and 12 something, they kept interrupting and disrupting me with loud cars, loud bass, and lots of um, ambulance sirens off and on harassing me and um you know they stop I mean they have the fake sirens and then after they immediately as they pass by me they stop abruptly so that's how I know it's part of the gang stalking but who the hell takes the dog on dogs outside at just after 1 30 in the morning right after he just was brightening his lights off and on into my into my window you know <clears throat> and so my brain and my mind is all over the place so I mean tonight I could have been sleeping right now but they I, as I said the gang stalkers they weren't having it to allow me to sleep before midnight for once I'm like oh wow for once I'm sleepy and tired and can go to 
you know, try to go to bed and go to sleep before midnight and it was 10 it was 1028 or whatever i checked the time and i was you know how it is when you're about to doze off and go to sleep so as i said they weren't having it and and i had to deal with constant loud obnoxious loud bass music cars but loud bass music kept repeatedly passing by and each time I try to grab my phone I f they gaslit me by hurry up and turn it turning it down or off and, or they would have the ambulance sirens and I would try to do the same thing y you know and they and they hurry up and turn off the sirens just that quick and the fact that I had two strokes when I was five you know my reflexes are slow and also, um, yesterday they kept doing it big time with a lot of instances. They kept delaying my phone on purpose yesterday when I kept trying to film and record gang stalking activity. And I felt like, well, just like the lady here, I mean, the lady that doesn't stay here and she had funny headlights and she delayed the demonic witch delayed my fucking phone on purpose so um so i mean and also in the middle of the night they kept vibrating my body on purpose to pre prevent me from falling asleep and yesterday, no matter how short the article was, or the blog post, I, it's like the very instant I started to um, work on a blog post, they, they tortured and vibrated me so bad that made me, feel, I'm going to say it, make me, made me feel like I just don't want to live anymore. I mean, and, and then after I stopped writing, that's when the, the, the vibrating torture was over. So, um, yesterday again, I think it was that person posing as this Fruity Pebbles character that kept trying to make me offers and deals. I think that person pretended, I'm not going to say this professed target, in target an individual's name, but this, they have perps who illegally and without my permission obtained my phone number, and then um, they obtained my phone number without my permission, and then... Um, think they have a, a narcissistic fake license and right to try to call me and, and, and then or text me and so I think it was that Fruity Pebbles perp that keeps asking me about the ex-boyfriend Alex Mendez and the fake former roommate Janet I think that person also tried again to pose as a targeted individual. And then I guess it didn't dawn on me until hours later. So, trying to say, well, I'm the one who makes nice videos about you. I'm, I'm a real targeted individual and I'm the one who makes nice videos about you. And oh, I want to help you and stuff like that. So uh, I, I can't say too much or go in just, you know, elaborate detail, but cause, because then other online perps, they're going to be go, trying to go and search stuff, you know. So you're posing as a certain targeted individual to try to manipulate me into letting my guard down and tell you if certain information. And it seems like 
Damn. It's, it's, it's like First Peter 5 and 8 in the Bible. And, and it, it seems like as if I have to be extra careful right now. Because it, it seems like they keep on trying to have slicker ways, slicker and more covert ways to try to act like they want to um, get me to sell out. Because they see me on like very much at high risk for being back on the streets again. They keep trying to get me. And it's funny how it was a um, fake T.I. perp. A fake Christian T.I. perp. Who, who was the one who tried to tell me that the gang stalkers are trying to get you to sell out. But then this, I, I mean, if you really wanted to help, that's how I know you fake and a perp because you'd be like, oh, I want to help you. Well, if you stalk all my videos, I'm pretty sure you read the description box. So if you really wanted to help, but you, you know, you keep on playing all kinds of games and skirting around and stuff and say, I really want to help you and stuff. But it's more like I want to be your handler and control you. Not, they don't want to help. I mean, they know my fundraiser. They know my... And, and those are the same ones who who keep trying to make threats to get my fundraiser or... They got the Delgar actual GoFundMe taken down. And they did... They committed fraud with that. So they got that taken down and they're making threats to report my Cash App and PayPal. And so, um, so, so they, they keep on, I mean, I gotta be extra, extra careful. You know, this, this one demonic perp, and see, did y'all, y'all probably didn't hear it, but, but he just, the, the, um, midget perp with the two dogs just slammed the door again he just slammed the door <clears throat> but um yeah last night i was trying yesterday evening i was trying to work on a blog post i was trying to work on a blog post and it was it was very short probably would take you 30 seconds to read it and and you know they hitlerized me so bad <clears throat> with the electronic weapons it was unbearable i can't even describe how, how unbearable it was it made me feel like any more intensity and, and you'll just fry my doggone skin off and then they were vibrating my organs and everything in the middle of the night when I try to go to sleep. And another thing is, it seems like as if yesterday, I mean, it was after I came back here. And I don't know how or why I have a big, huge, I don't know if it's a big zit or it keeps getting bigger, like filling up with more pus in my ear. And it's like as if I have like an outer, like the start of an outer ear infection. And it, it hurts so doggone bad. And I ran out of the powder bentonite clay. I ran out of the powder bentonite clay. So yesterday evening, I mean afternoon, you know, usually... Like lately, I've been eating only two meals a day, trying to save money and trying to practice for. You know, I, I mean, I, there'll be times I try to I try to practice to go without go some time without food, and and then it seems like as if it's like a torturous feeling, like my body can't handle it. You, you know, 
and, and so then um because because you know the the preppers they're talking about stocking up and preparing but I barely have enough money you know I, I'd be having to ask for help for money to stay here and if I was on the streets she called myself trying to store things you, you know my stuff has gotten stolen before so it looks like I couldn't even store things on the streets I can't store food in a storage unit and so I don't have anywhere to put really any food or anything and he just slammed the door again so um it's getting really scary oh man they hit me with in the oh man they hit me in the left side of my forehead like just above my eye and shooting the pain all the way through my nose yeah and once i mentioned it now they stop and left me, now they stop dang so it's like times are getting really scary and they're hitting me again so um times are getting really scary and um you know and I I don't even know if other people homeless people how if they do prepping I don't know how they're able to do it but being a TI you got forced to be alone and by yourself but other homeless people they can be out in camps and you know they look out for each other and have each other's have each other's back but if you're targeted you know nobody likes you and they're gonna steal your stuff and then you get blamed and people tell you it's all your fault so I don't get to have such a privilege to stock up and store on food store food and stuff so he keeps going playing games and going in and out did you hear the door slam so um so like before this video I had well I think it was one video I couldn't make public but um it was one video I couldn't make public but he just slammed the door again so um only one, one video I couldn't make public because I don't know if they were going to get on my case so to save my account I had I, I couldn't make it public but I, I waited until the middle of the night I guess while most of my supporters American supporters are asleep and so I took all those videos from sm shorter it was probably like 12 shorter videos from yesterday so I apologize for clogging or flooding your timeline or, or if you thought I was being annoying but the narcissistic perps they want to pretend like they find it annoying but they're still subscribed to my channel and gonna childishly thumbs down every dog on video see he just slammed the door again and so um so so then you know I have I don't know I didn't count how many but I have probably over 12 videos that were short from yet I must say yesterday from several hours ago that um well I uploaded them yesterday but made them private because I felt like I didn't want to clog up your timelines so then I waited until the middle of the night while everybody was asleep and I made those videos public and it, you know if, if you got time you know you can watch them but it and, and a lot of those those videos may not 
get that many thumb. I mean, I'm sorry, that, that many views, you know, but I, I put them out there. And I had a lot of street theater videos. I, I mean, well, it was one incident that kept starting and stopping up, you know, over and over again and stuff. So, um, and then a guy, it, it, it was a, um, you know, a gay guy that coughed on me. He looked like he was Hispanic. And he was talking on the phone and talking about, oh, well, I don't know if I have bronchitis. And then he, um, right when he got near me, he coughed on purpose without covering his mouth. And so, um, and so then, hold on, ooh. They had the street theater. I mean, I'm sorry, the noise campaign video that I did where it was when I was sitting down trying to upload some videos and trying to relax and trying to condition my mind to work on a blog post and I and I couldn't even work on it. And so um, I could not work on the blog post. And, and so, so, I mean, I took a quick break from panhandling and asking for money. And I was going to do a blog post writing about that, like I mentioned yesterday. But I didn't get to work on it. And so then, um, hold on, ooh. So... So, um, it was this, huh, mm. it was this, um, you know, I'm sorry, it's, it's like they blasted the music super loud on purpose to run me out, away from that spot. And then shortly after I got up, that's when they, they immediately turned the music off. And then when I try to go back, you know, when I thought I could feel a little confident and try to go back, that's when they started it back up again. And so it's like they effectively ran me out of the doggone at a comfort spot. So, um... I was forced to go sit somewhere else. And then I had to deal with the street theater. That street theater incident. And, and it's like they wanted to monitor, pretend to fake monitor and surveil me as I was panhandling and asking for help. You, you know. So, oh man, I don't, I mean, I can't even think of what else, I, oh, oh yeah, so, also, like, yesterday, um, well, the guy that donated me $50, I used, I mean, when I had, um, I went to the library anyway, you know, and some of the panhandled money off the streets, I used that to get me, you know, a smoothie and a little coffee cake or a cinnamon cake or whatever and, and some water. And, um, that was from the, the, the street money, strip money that I panhandled on the street. You know, that was later on. And so, then, you know, I e eventually found the doggone computer. No, it's like, I don't know how people make it here in Pensacola with the bus system and the confusing um, bus stops and the bus routes and everything is very confusing. 
and I was somewhat new here and had been here for like three months and it was a black male bus narcissistic perp bus driver who got an attitude with me and I got into a heated argument with him um because I was conf I was road route 43 and I was trying to get to UWF campus and um for the first time and and so um the I got the the directions mixed up and, and I was really confused and, and the bus driver was really nasty towards me and me and him got into a heated argument and stuff like that and then I rode the, uh, the other bus it was I mean I had to change to route oh I forgot which one um yeah, I had to wait a while and then get on the other 43. And then that bus job, that bus driver got really nasty with me, and I got a, into a heated argument with him too. There was that Ernest Simmons guy, the one who, some time later, some you know months later on, sexually assaulted me. And so, um, so I mean. So then, um, after that, I mean, that day, I had, it was a Friday, and, and I, I pretty much walked all the way from UWF campus and walked all the way down North Davis Highway and and walked all the way downtown to my sleep spot. And I mean, I think that evening it was about um, probably a little bit after six o'clock and it was a white man who um, was generous enough to, he asked me if I was traveling or a traveler. And I said, well, no, no I'm homeless, but you know, he assumed that I was a traveler, and he, it was an Asian, I think it was an Asian buffet restaurant or something near UWF campus, and um, I don't remember how the food tasted, but, um, but he paid for my meal, and then I, I took that long journey, and I think I had money at that time not a lot but a little bit of money and um i was trying to call cab call for a cab i wasn't riding uber then you know i was trying to stay away from uber and lyft and all that because certain things i heard but i kept trying to call a cab and i don't know i don't remember no i don't it couldn't have been fourth of july because i was in my hometown new orleans around that time but I had just got back and so I imagine walking from and then I think I took a, a brief break at um at the Publix on Nine Mile Road and I walked um I, I think I took a little break and then about 10 o'clock at night I continued walk, just walking and then I stopped by the Waffle House on North Davis Highway and tried to get me some, um, try to get me some, um, water to drink or something. And I sat down and rested for a while and then I kept just walking. And then only one car of people had donated me $5 while I was walking. And then I was close I was on Powell Fox and close to Savanti Street and before I got to Savanti Street Cervantes in Spanish um my heart felt like I felt a couple of nights ago for that Friday night like my heart was um my heart rate was sped up and I thought I was gonna have a heart attack or just straight up drop dead and then I went to the Days Inn downtown, and 
I mean, I tried to go to the gas station and it was closed. And so I went to the days in downtown and tried to ask for some water. And and the lady was rude to me and wouldn't let she wouldn't give me any water or she wouldn't um allow me to use she wouldn't allow me to use the bathroom or get any water. And I asked her, well, how much was the the hotel room for one night? She told me it was 180-something. I was like, damn. And I didn't have that money. And so when I finally ended up being a guest there sometime later, they gang stalked super heavy at that hotel. And I think recently I thought I heard somebody got shot and killed or somebody died over there. Like, two weeks ago, I heard something like that. But that downtown um, days in, they perked me so doggone bad every time I go there. So, um, the last time I went there was about August of last year. And, um, and, and so... Excuse me. Um, but during the daytime or whatever, other homeless, they're allowed to hang out in the lobby and hang and get whatever water or snacks or whatever they want. But I don't have, I don't get to have those privileges. And then if I try to go in, in the dining room or whatever to go eat, they per, the, the, the workers there and the front desk, they all, every single last one of them, they're all aggressive perks. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, that night, all because of, you know, me getting mad at two bus drivers being rude to me, now I ended up getting frustrated and just walking. And then, it's like I could have lost my life the next super early the next morning because it was after midnight but I didn't get to finally get to my sleep spot until close to five o'clock in the morning and I think I had a job then so then I had to get up I mean I had to go later that day and work and I was forced to be sleep deprived And so, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know what event happened where all the cabs were booked up and the Ubers probably would have been the same. I probably would have had the same issue with the Uber. But, you know, I thought I was hydrated enough or thought I had enough water, but I I guess not. And, you know, I thought I was going to die. I never had that. I mean, it was tra- it, it was traumatic for me that my heart rate was that high, that over over re- I mean, overactive that I was afraid that I was gonna, you know, have a heart attack and drop dead, and nobody would care. So um. One thing, after talking to the biological brother Wyatt for, you know, a couple of weeks, now his speech impediment talk way of talking is drilled in my head and I found myself being extra careful to not say things how he says them. Like, if he says, I'm not going to do this or "I'm I'm not going to do this or, you know, He'll say, I'm not not do that. Or if he said, I ain't doing that. Oh, I ain't, I ain't not doing it. He'll be like, I ain't not do that. Or he'll say that, you know, oh, why? What you doing? Instead of saying nothing, he'll say nothing. Or he, he'll say like, oh, that's not important. Instead of important, he'll say important. 
or he'll say kiko instead of people or he'll say um like one time it was 2005 after hurricane katrina and he says that your nervous handwriting instead of handwriting he said handwriting so i with my ocd i question whether or not i, I hope i'd be feeling like well i hope i didn't say any words that sounded like how he would say you know if i accidentally slipped and said certain instead of certain and now i find myself stumbling on my words and like the biological sister that mentally off slow retard ramona she'll say instead of the um trouble with the b she'll say trouble with the v as in as in voice you know she'll say trouble instead of trouble or she'll say tuv t-u-v instead of t-u-b like so um so so it's like it's even like is it wow they're bad speech habits i try not to let it rub on me but um wow so anyway i was trying to say that the the guy that donated me fifty dollars you know i i took the dog I'm, I'm glad the bus wasn't as crowded on the way back to the motel room i'm glad the bus wasn't as crowded and so you know i was just so tired and i set aside some of the cash from panhandling on the streets i was going to set that aside because i also wanted to have <clears throat> you know some extra little cash so i can have you know a little bit extra enough so i can get laundry done and so i ordered you know some my groceries through DoorDash and plus the buses stopped running a little earlier on Saturdays you know that for the, the bus that came at 4 11 yesterday um that was the last bus and so you know I did whatever panhandling I needed to do and um the fact that the buses were gonna stop running earlier you know it would have been pointless for me to get less groceries and then take an uber back so i just took the dirty buses and um i well i mean i i got 70 i mean i'm sorry i got 45 dollars set aside i got 45 dollars set aside you know for the landlord i mean the the manager whenever he wants to take it you, you know 45 dollars in cash and i said that you know the little bit extra cash from panhandling i was gonna use that to um i, I was gonna use that to um you know for laundry and maybe some more bus fare you know but the fifty dollars that was donated to me online you know i used that to order groceries and they it was a special deal where they canceled the grocery delivery fee but then they had the tax and service fees and stuff you know so it's it, it inflation must really be going up and then they didn't have every item that i needed or wanted and i couldn't even don't the, the only bit of breakfast i was able to order was eggs and, and that was one package of cooked i mean already boiled and peeled eggs that's coming like six in the pack and they usually be like two dollars at fake walmart or something but when i ordered it like at from when Dixie, it was like three dollars, almost three dollars, 
And so, for y'all narcissistic perps who want to be talking about candies, wasting money, y'all must be ignorant to this food shortages and inflation. So, you know, I'm trying to order food on, order groceries through DoorDash, and it's like, you know, I couldn't get the oatmeal because they were out of the oatmeal that, that the generic brand of oatmeal that I wanted and I didn't have the money for the regular name Quaker so I tried to get the store brand generic and they didn't have that so then they're like well you know here's the the lower sugar well I said well if they got to be lower sugar then I don't want it you, you, you know I just you know forget and cancel and just try to find something else for breakfast but with the half of um you hear that? Who the hell rides motorcycles at, at almost two fifteen in the morning? But anyway, the the half of um the half of box of cereal, I mean I can use that for the milk. And I, I couldn't even I, I mean I I, I I mean so it's like that was enough food that that was enough food to um wow fifty dollars oh, well it was under fifty but it was like forty six dollars or something almost forty seven but it's it's like forty seven dollars worth of food or more like forty dollars worth of food and you try to eat healthier but then you can't eat as cheap as you want because the microwavable stuff. Um, it seemed like as if that was just enough for like two or three days worth of food. I mean, the way that they raised the prices and everything. And they had these little bagged frozen meatballs that I bought. I mean, that I ordered in, on, you know, with the groceries. And the meatballs tasted like, wow, the meatballs tasted like, um, they tasted like harder or tougher bologna or something. They didn't even taste like real actual meatballs. And, um, that was the only little meat. I was able to get was like one bag of small bag of meatballs and some pasta and I try to get me a bag of um you, you know green leafy vegetables and they didn't have what I originally asked so they substituted that with another one and I got I got me um what was that um so I got me a bag of apples and oh man I don't remember what else I got like let's see milk apples eggs pasta let's see milk apples eggs pasta and um meatballs and a small, I mean, I, I don't even really eat pudding, but um, I was trying to figure out what items could, could I get that's under $2, and it was much or nothing, but you would have to take an Uber or the dirty buses to go to Winn-Dixie, and the buses don't run on Sundays. The, only the beach buses run on Sunday and and so you would have to physically go to Winn-Dixie in order to get certain deals you know buy one get one free and stuff you know so I mean thanks for, for you know whatever help I mean but you narcissistic perp need to butt out, you know. Y'all, you didn't buy me any food or 
help me with any hotel or anything like that. But those are the same ones, you know, they're, they're the main ones who act like they want, they want trying to get me to sell out now. But as I said, you know, even on Twitter, they, the Cash App spammers, P as in puppy, spam, not scam, but spammers. And they, but they're probably scammers too. The Cash App spammers, they, um, if they say that they want to help, well, you see where my, where my Cash App is, and you say, oh, I want to help or whatever. Or, oh, DM me, I'm your sugar daddy, or, or whatever. And so I just block those. You know, whenever I post asking for help, it's always an automatic, you know. Some people might say that the Cash App spammers are um, artificial intelligence or AI bot accounts. But they use real people. I mean, they use pictures of real people. And stuff you know but you know as I was saying that if you say well I really want to help you and, but then you know what my cash app and my PayPal is and you say oh I want to help you well why don't you just donate <clears throat> but they want to play cat and mouse they, they want to you know lead me on a wild goose chase and they want to leave me on a wild goose chase and play cat and mouse all because they want to find covert and slick ways to try to manipulate me into unknowingly selling out. <clears throat> so, I have to be on my guard. Like, this is the third day in a row that that, well, I'm just going to call it Fruity Pebbles because that the first night the perp refused to, um, tell me their name then the second night you should you falsely show yourself as fruity pebbles so that's why I'm gonna call you and then the third day you know you texting me pretending to be another legitimate targeted individual and it took a while <clears throat> I mean I, I guess and, and then they p-r-e-y pray not p-r-a-y but p-r-e-y on me being sleep deprived and so it's like they know that when you sleep deprived you can't even make the best decisions so it's like now I, i'm sitting here feeling like nobody's to be trusted like, like i can't trust any dog on body right now you know and it's either they'll the online perps will pretend to be real targeted pretend to be names of real targeted individuals to manipulate me into thinking that hey this is like what happened to with Cynthia Burns I don't know if that was really Cynthia Burns or if that was a fake uh, or if that was a perp impersonating her because I'm like wait a minute this does not sound like Cynthia Burns at all and she said that her phone was hacked So, I mean, um, from the, the way the person was texting me and harassing and abusing me over some days, and I feel like you're not going to be a real targeted individual. You're not going to be a real T.I. and say that, well, you should give gifts and be friendly with the perps. And then you're abusing me about my teeth. <clears throat> so, as I said, I don't know if that was really Cynthia Burns or a perp that was impersonating her. <clears throat> Just like, I, I really think it was a perp, you, you know, the same perp that been harassing me over the past three days, impersonating another professed target whose name I'm not going to mention. So, um, It's, it's it's like as I said they're becoming more slick and I gotta be extra careful and, and it's making me want to shut in and not contact or talk to anybody at all <clears throat> but 
it, it seems like, as I said, it's like, I don't understand why they're doing this. If they're trying to make, like, they want to threaten to report my fundraisers, get my blog taken down, get my ebooks taken down, get everything destroyed, just so that they can have a fake solution. They create the problem, you know, problem reaction solution. And then the solution is for them to act like as if they want, but as if they want to try to get me to sell out. But then they keep on being self righteous with condemning me and talking about my inappropriate behavior and acting out and stuff. And it's like, I'm wondering how the hell you're going to be a perp and trying to dictate or tell me, well, this is how you handle the perps or just ignore them. How are you going to tell me to do that and you a perp too? But I guess they try to pretend like they control the opposition. If you say, I mean, how are you going to tell me to ignore a perp? And then you start to act like a perp too. So it's like these days are being like more evil. I mean, I mean I'm scared to talk to anybody now. I'm scared to talk to anybody now. And so, this Friday's the 29th, then Saturday's the 30th, and then Sunday's the 1st, and I doubt if they'll give me the doggone $24 in SSI money on Friday. And so... And I just feel like the hell with Social Security. You know, the administration. And I'm not mentally ready to go into their office and, and deal with being abused and perked. And, and, and for them to successfully get me locked up in a mental institution or jail or something. That's why, I, I mean, I think I heard that they recently, bitch ass, causing me forced hiccups. So, so they, um, what they're trying to do is, I mean, I heard that they opened their offices back up again, but I don't have the guts or the balls, and I'm not mentally ready to face the psychological games and abuse, dealing with the people at the Social Security office. And so, um... So, so I mean, it's like, dealing with the Social Security office, I, I mean, I just can't mentally, I, I, like, I'm not, well, I'm just not mentally ready, you know, to deal with their psychological games. Oh, I mean, that small pack of pudding, it was under a dollar fifty, it was a dollar forty-five. But I don't even get pudding. But you know, I was trying to fill up enough to close to fifty dollars, and I couldn't even really get any breakfast food, well, except eggs and milk. But dog, it's it's so hard. It's so hard, you know. So. I really, I really, so, oh, I was trying to say that on May 3rd, um, is a Tuesday, so I, I'm supposed to get the Social Security check then, and, you, you know, the week of, I guess, the 5th, I shouldn't have to ask for, you know, motel room money or help with that. But, um, April 29th, you know, this coming Friday, it's like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, um, ask for help. I'm going to have to ask for help, um, for, for the, you know, help 
to stay here, you know, another week. And then for the May for May fifth, that week I, I shouldn't have anything to worry about. So um Well, I mean yeah, I mean, everything is rising. You, like, all the food prices, everything is going up. And in my predicament, I don't have a way to stock up and prepare. And I'm at risk for being having to be back on the streets probably this Friday, you know, if I don't get any extra help. Because it was hard getting help this past week. I just barely made it. And, and I mean, I was afraid that people thought I was annoying or a burden. Or, um, you, you know, it's like, well, how come other, when other people do YouTube videos, if they're a content creator, it's considered work. And they make a living off of YouTube videos. And and I can't, I'm not allowed to have my YouTube videos monetized. They block me from having my blog monetized. I was trying to even write more short stories or more blog posts, hoping I can make a living off of that. And as I said, yesterday I tried to work on a very short blog post. I successfully got it, you know, I put it up there. But, uh, hold on. Ooh. But the, but the blog, I, I mean, the gang stalkers, they, they electronically abuse my body. The instant, the, the very instant I started typing, but then a narcissistic control freak, fake T.I. perp, will aggressively demand an answer for, how would they know that you're typing? Well, I, I thought you knew if you're supposed to be a targeted individual. I thought you would know that if they, with the remote neural monitoring, if you might even say it in your videos, if they see, you know, you, you know that the gang stalkers see you know they they the gang stalkers they see what you see or hear what you hear or something like that or they know what's in your brain or on, or on your mind or whatever trying to play god and so um if so i, I mean i didn't announce in advance well hey i'm about to um you know i'm about to order stuff on doordash but I was waiting for my order when um when they had that perp with the car that doesn't belong here. I mean the SUV, the raggedy SUV that doesn't belong here. She um she acted like she was pretending to fake monitor and wait around for when my um when my DoorDash order came and when my DoorDash order came like it seemed like as she as if I saw on the app it looked like she made like a little deep four and held me up for like maybe ten extra minutes. When you say you when the app says you're two minutes away or you're approaching and then I gotta wait another ten minutes. So um but you know the door dasher had like a raggedy red van, but I didn't see any strange headlights or, or tail lights or nothing. But the lady had her grandson, what well, looked like her grandson with her and stuff like that. So I didn't announce in advance that, hey, I'm about to order on DoorDash. But that, but sometimes the perps will be right there to narcissistically pretend to monitor and surveil my activity with you know trying to get whatever food delivery or something <clears throat> so um if y'all want to criminalize me for ordering food and stuff um it ain't nearly as bad as the crimes y'all committing y'all always want to hunt and look for something to make like as if I'm wrong for doing this or wrong for that so I didn't announce in advance, and the perps still knew. I mean, I mean they, they're starting to vibrate my body again. 
So see how I just said starting or waiting? The biological brother Wyatt would say starting or waiting or something like that. He been talking like that since we were little kids. But he used to say always, but then as we got older, he started to say always. <clears throat> he used to be like, yo, always, always, always getting me in trouble. <sighs> Saying you always, always, always getting me in trouble. Well, stop teasing us. But, you know, I'm just saying when we were little kids, you know, I'm over that now. But, you know, I'm, I mean, I don't hold, nowadays, I know not to hold stuff against people from when we were, you know, little kids and stuff, you know. If we were little kids and didn't know no better, you know. <clears throat> but it's the stuff you bastards are doing now, you know, that I hold you accountable for. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um. Uh, I'm glad I was able to express that because, I mean, you know, so, um, it's, it seems like trying to eat healthier and then have to be restricted to microwavable stuff or, it, it seems like, I mean, I didn't want to be living off a of deli ham and white bread and stuff you know even though it tastes good or whatever but you know i wanted to strive for something healthier and i mean my body just felt like trash and it just, I, I just did not feel good or feel right you know my body and my mind didn't feel right you know i just felt a certain kind of way like i just knew i was poisoning my body with food from dollar general and stuff so I wanted to try to strive to get food that's more, a little, you know, more nutritious, a little healthier, you know. But wow, that pretty much took up like two or three days worth of food. So, you know, I really hate having to panhandle on the streets. I even hate having to ask for money online. But, you know, nobody wants to give me a job or they don't want to let me, um, you know, make money off my writings or anything like that. And I hate that the narcissistic perps, they can be successful at brainwashing everybody to hate me and not be supportive. And I have not made not one penny off of content on this channel. You, you know, and it's hard to even get any donations of support to keep me afloat and living. And I already explained about how they won't let me get an apartment or a place to live, and they sabotaged that. They ran me off the Section 8, and um, I nearly lost my life with that. <clears throat> and, you know, and, but it's not considered a burden when people put up a GoFundMe and ask for, like, a fundraiser for, you know, for a doghouse or something, they put up $20, I mean, $20,000 GoFundMe for a luxury, fancy doghouse for their dog. And, you know, that's not a burden. And, and they, that, they flood, you know, with donations and, you know, but here I'm just dog on struggling to to survive. I mean, why can't you just get your dog a small little kennel or or whatever? But no, nah, you want to give your dog a special fancy dog house or whatever. You know, or you would rather donate a hundred thousand dollars and and then. After a hundred thousand that you put up for a gender reassignment, then oh, you get three hundred thirty thousand dollars in donations, and overnight, and that's not seen as a burden. But you know, people try to make it like as if I should just shut up and go away, 
or people want to make like, oh, people don't have money like that to be shelling out. Oh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People don't have money to be shelling out like that. But oh, y'all got money to be shelling out for gang stalking. Y'all got money to, to um, shell out for, for um, cover-ups and for pedophilia and drug trafficking and child trafficking. Y'all the ones with twisted priorities. Y'all would rather donate, you know, to the Freedom Trucker Convoy or Ukraine. But they got homeless military vets who are sometimes, you know, some of them are targeted. And, oh, you don't have a way to help them, but you, you can go help people overseas. But, you know, I'm... I'm not a military vet, but I'm disabled and, you know, a homeless targeted individual battling to stay off the streets. And I'm, I don't know if I might have to leave this Friday and have to be back on the streets again. Cause, you know, people feel like I'm a burden and they just want me to, they just want me to get out of everybody's hair. <clears throat> so, I'm going to try again to get to go to sleep.